departing from passenger three is the 917 service to London King's Cross. three times the size of our sun ought to end its life, how? With a collapse. The gravitational forces of the entire mass overcoming the electromagnetic forces of individual atoms and so collapsing inwards. If the star is massive enough, it will continue this collapse, creating a black hole where the warping of space-time is so great that nothing can escape, not even light. It gets smaller smaller. The star, in fact, gets denser as atoms, even subatomic particles, get literally crushed into smaller and smaller space. And at its end point, what are we left with? A space-time singularity. Space and time come to a stop. I wonder what would happen if you applied Penrose's theory about black holes to the entire universe. If Einstein is right, right, if general relativity is correct, then the yes. universe is expanding, yes? Yes. Okay, so. If you reverse time, then the universe is getting smaller. All right. So, what if I reverse the process all the way back to see what happened at the beginning of time itself? At the beginning of time itself? Yes. So the universe getting smaller and smaller, getting denser and denser, hotter and hotter... You as mean we wind back the clock? Yeah, exactly, wind back the clock. Wind back the clock. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> You're winding back the clock. That is what I'm doing. <laughs> well, keep winding. I know. And you've got quite a long way to go. Keep winding. I don't want to fall in. Well, you've got to go back to the beginning of time. You've got a long way to go. Well, keep winding. Keep winding. Until you get... A singularity. A space-time singularity. So the universe born from a black hole exploding. Keep going. What do you mean, keep going? What? Before the universe began. No, 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 no. Keep going, develop the mathematics. Push it as hard as you can. Push it. Push it. 
as hard as you can. I am pushing as hard as I can. Wait. Wait, come on. One, two. Why won't it? All right, all right. Fourth finger, fourth peg. It's a progressive neurological disorder that destroys the cells in the brain that control essential muscle activity, such as speaking, walking, breathing, swallowing. The signals that muscles must receive in order to move are disrupted. The result is gradual muscle decay, wasting away. Eventually, the ability to control voluntary movement is lost entirely. I'm afraid average life expectancy is two years. There's nothing I can do for you. What about the brain? The brain isn't affected. Your thoughts won't change, it's just that well, eventually no one will know what they are. I'm ever so sorry. episode of The Natural World, where this week we explore the bizarre hibernation patterns of the rare Cambridge physicist, seen here in his remarkable plumage. So how was it? What did they say? How's your wrist? I have a disease, boy. Is it venereal, Stephen? <laughs> I have motor neuron disease. Sorry, I don't... It's Lou Gehrig's disease. He was a baseball player. Sorry, I'm lagging behind in my pioneering research into obscure motor baseball-related diseases. <laughs> I have two years to live. Sorry? It does sound odd when you say it out loud, doesn't it? Hey, what do you mean? Are you doing? What what did, what, did, what what did they say? Sorry, I I don't really um. Will you go, Brian? Stephen, I was just being a burk. I didn't. I didn't. I'm sorry. I'll, no, I'll be. It's not, I... You go. Stephen, phone for you. It's a girl. I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll see you soon. 